Well, New Jersey may have legalized marijuana, but we are still months away from dispensaries actually opening. And tonight, the I team going behind the scenes with a black market New Jersey pot dealer. He's up front about his underground business, so why is he openly challenging the government's rollout of legal marijuana? Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace takes us inside the world of the New Jersey weed man. Enjoy. It's the lunchtime rush at Trenton, New Jersey's smoking hot spots. Talk of the town. Everybody telling me to come here and say he got the best in town. It's all flour right there. So we pre bag it. Gummies, about edibles and stuff. This is the black market. This is the black market. A booming market of pot products. Two grams of flour. Sold illegally and openly at NJ Weedman's joint. Right across from City Hall. His real name is Edward Fortune. I think I'm like the people's champ right now. Um, the Robin Hood of Reefer. <laughs> Are you daring the cops to raise you? I used to, and I'm not daring the cops. Actually, as more the politicians. Yeah, Fortune, who has a decades-old felony drug conviction, says he's beaten other recent prosecutions. I believe the reason why I'm not being arrested is because of my past success. Now he's taking on the new regulatory system in New Jersey that will oversee the rollout of legal recreational weed. Initial licenses for growers tightly capped. I, I actually have have said that there should be a thousand of me like this all over the state. Instead, what the governor's plot and plan is to license 37 places, big corporations, to grow marijuana. And everyone else is supposed to buy it from them. They don't put a sign up and say, no Negroes need to apply. There's, they don't do that. Oh, you need $2 million for this. You need this. You need to go before this board. You need to, go, you need to get approved. There's all these obstacles to prevent the ones that they don't want. In it. He says he's going to keep buying from suppliers he chooses and sell on his own terms. The only way that they're going to get rid of the black market is to include us in their legalization. If they don't include us, we're still going to exist. I'm not going to suddenly one day go, oh, well, legalization's here, the white guys are allowed to sell weed now. I guess I'll stop. <laughs> it's never going to happen. A free market system would include guys like me. But for now, it stays the black market, and he's cashing in big. The shop now averages about 200 customers a day, even more on the weekends. Technically, this is a black market. What do you think? That's yeah, ridiculous, though. It should be available anywhere. Anyone should be able to do this. It's more legal to me coming here than go and do a dude on the street. I understand why he does things the way he does, and I'm behind that. Do you limit buying? No. I can come in here and buy an eighth up to a pound. So how do you know people aren't buying and then selling? I hope some of them are. In an average day, how much are you clearing? Well, I'd rather not talk about that. <laughs> Keep coming back, man. From Trenton, Sarah Wallace, News 4 New York.